Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Body TV. I'm Dr. Kim DeRamo. I'm going to be sharing today on how your thoughts create your health, how your thoughts can affect and block health, and how to change your thoughts so you can allow major change effortlessly. One of the things that happens a lot, especially when people understand the mind and body are connected, they start to think, oh my gosh, I've got to be positive in order to have positive things happen. And oh no, I'm having these negative thoughts. I've got to change my beliefs. I've got to change my thoughts. I've got to do all this work. Oh my gosh, it's huge. There's so many negative beliefs. That is not actually what is required. So I want to introduce you to a much simpler way to allow your body to be in harmony so that you can heal effortlessly. So if you're new to Mind Body TV, welcome. And for those of you listening to the recording or the podcast, I want to welcome you as well. I have been practicing mind-body medicine for decades now after having had a very severe anxiety disorder many, many, many years ago. I was very young. I didn't understand what was going on. It was not a time when people were talking about stress and not mentioning the word anxiety. Today, it's like a buzzword. Oh my gosh, I have so much anxiety. Oh, I'm so anxious. And it's like everybody just kind of knows that's just the way it goes. You know, we're just so busy. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so anxious. When I experienced this many, many years ago, I just thought I must be possessed by the devil. I have no idea what's happening. I had unthinkable panic attacks and um, it was a really horrific experience. I didn't have anybody who could guide me into what was going on, but after, um, you know, trying to be put on medication, you know, I was young, I was like 16 to about 22. Um, I just realized I got to deal with this myself. I did not want to be on these medications. I would kind of sneak myself off of them because they had so many like detrimental effects and I didn't like being on them. So I realized if I'm going to do this, it's me and me. And that was when I started to really feel more into my body of realize that my mind, my thoughts were affecting my body and creating and then propagating the anxiety. And it would spiral out of control depending on what I was thinking about and specifically how I was relating to what was happening in my body. And that is a major, major key I'm going to talk about in today's Mind Body TV podcast is that our relationship with our body, the thoughts we have about our symptoms, the thoughts we have about what we feel are the most important key component where we can make major change. So welcome. If you have struggled with anxiety like I did or an autoimmune illness, uh, which was another thing that happened years after that, um, was chronic fatigue or um, chronic pain, or if you've struggled with an illness and been told, we have no idea what's wrong with you, or nothing can be done, and you kind of feel like, wow, I've, I don't like these solutions, I don't want to be on medications, or I know something more can happen, stay tuned, because this will be a really important way to begin to relate to what you feel, relating to your body in a new way, relating to your symptoms. So welcome everyone and thanks for the comments. I certainly welcome your comments here on our Facebook broadcast. We broadcast every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. And right now we are broadcasting on the Addicted to Yoga fan page. So welcome all of these beautiful yogis. I know for me, yoga has been a major, major piece of allowing myself to have a more harmonious relationship with my body and a more harmonious stream of thought. Now, you can't turn your thoughts off. I know a lot of times we try to just live in total stillness, and that is a beautiful practice when we meditate, let ourselves clear our mind, focus on the breath and bring awareness to the breath, and that does create immense health benefits. So for those of you listening now, take a few deep breaths. Let everything go. Relax your body. And then as you're listening or watching this um, broadcast, just feel what do I feel in my body while I'm listening or watching here. So just bring your awareness to what you feel. Bring your awareness to your breath. Feel the breath moving in your body. And this does have a really powerful calming effect. When you do this, you'll notice more things. You'll notice energies you feel in your body, maybe some stuff you've suppressed that you didn't want to feel. And it can feel like, oh, no, no, this is not good. I shouldn't be mindful because I don't want to feel this. Let me go get busy. No, 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 no. You want to actually invite that because that's energy moving.
So that's kind of the first step is allowing your body awareness to key you in to what is happening in here. And so the first piece that I'm going to share with you is that to connect with your limiting beliefs or negative, you know, counteractive thoughts, you want to practice some body awareness. If you're doing yoga, awesome. You actually could still be doing yoga outside of your body. Like, what do I have to do later? Oh, I hope this is helping me lose weight. Oh, am I working out enough? You know, when you're in the mind and you want to use the breath in meditation or um, in yoga to connect with your body. What do I feel in my body? Am I living in my body or am I living outside my body, wondering about what's going to happen or focusing on what things have happened or thinking about what do others think of me? Come back. Come back into the body and take a few deep breaths. So we'll just do this now as we begin. Let everything go. Jennifer has noted, yes, just looking at my rashes makes me more stress and increases the inflammation. That was what I experienced too. When I would feel pain, I would go into contraction and it would immediately trigger a stress response. So this is what we're going to be reversing here. So the first piece we're going to talk about is how do I become aware of my limiting beliefs? How do I become aware of these thought patterns that I've held that it could release and that you're, they're subconscious. A lot of times people think, but I know I deserve to have health. And I know that, yes, 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 I love my body. I love my body. Why haven't I healed? Um, but when they look deeper and do some of the exercises that I've invited, um, and if you want to share in some of those, we I post very regularly in the Mind Body community. That's um, my group on Facebook. Um, someone just shared the other day how she did this exercise in looking in the mirror focusing on her body and sending love to her body. And she said, I thought I loved my body. I understood I should love my body, but so much energy moved. This is one of the hardest things I ever did as I allowed myself to really actually embrace love from my body. So a lot of times we think, oh, no, 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 I don't believe those negative things. And then when we actually look, there's a lot of self-rejection, rejection about the body. The body's bad or um, sexuality is bad. Food is bad. I shouldn't be enjoying these things. I should be struggling to improve myself. That was something I had for a long time was like using struggle or suffering as um, a path of transformation. Jeez. Yeek. That was not fun, and it was really limited. So if you have these ideas about how you should be or ideas about your body, judgments of your body, these are very, very toxic to your health. So keep breathing. We're going to move forward. That's that first piece of like having awareness, living from within my body so that I can feel what is coming up, what am I feeling, and then begin to witness some of the thoughts that I have. If you don't know what your limiting beliefs are, you can simply look around at your life. Where is there a limitation? I don't have enough time. I'm busy. I don't have enough money. I have to struggle or do work that I don't really love. Um, I'm not lovable. I have to be in these relationships and I should be more giving or loving or kind of put up with things that really aren't nurturing to me. Are you lying to yourself about these? Your body will not lie. If you do this first step and practice this body awareness, living within your body, you will know this doesn't feel good. Your body will not lie. It will be in harmony when you're in resonance with the truth about your nature. I am loving. I am beautiful. I am infinite. I'm powerful. I'm valuable. And it will be contracted or create pain or limitation when you're not in alignment with the truth about you. I should do better. I should do more. I shouldn't eat these foods. I should be more disciplined. <sighs> so a lot of the things we learn, maybe in like health books, diet books, um, self-improvement, whatever, it gets interpreted in the wrong way. And your body will not lie. So you can begin to feel your body and then know, wait a minute, there's something that's not true here. And having that focal point of I'm living within my body. Feel your breath. <sighs> Relax your shoulders. Feel your body. So it's like, hey body, what's going on in here? How are you feeling? In a lot of the work that I have um, when people come into a program with me, this is like the major thing we do is actually get you connected 
with your body. And that's what the Instant Elevation program really goes deeply into is creating that harmonic alignment within yourself. And even in my book, The Mind Body Toolkit, um, and there's a video program I set up with that, that is all it is. It's like, here's this principle, your mind and your body are connected. But in the book, it's um, it really shares, here's how you play with that. Here's how you ignite harmony with that. Here's how you use that to your benefit. So we'll touch on some of these today. So that's kind of the first step. The second step is um, what are these limiting beliefs and how can I allow myself to let them go? So when you look around at your life, you feel what you feel in your body and you're like maybe feeling um, anxious, fear. Maybe you feel anger. Maybe there's frustration or overwhelm or like whatever it is, that's going to be a reflection of these beliefs you bought into that your body is actually showing you, no, 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 you can let this go. We make it wrong that we have pain. We make it wrong that we have anxiety or fatigue or whatever, fill in the blank. We make it wrong that we have um, digestive problems and my body can't digest food. But actually, how is my body my greatest ally showing me what I need to let go of so that I can live in ideal health? So if we kind of connect with our body and look at our life, what are these beliefs that I'm living? And you could write them down just to get more familiar with them. But I like to just connect in my body and just feel the effects they're having. So if you take a few deep breaths and close your eyes if you would like, and you just, um, you just relax your shoulders, relax your pelvis, and then bring your attention to your body. What do I feel in my neck? What do I feel in my chest? What do I feel in my belly? What do I feel in my pelvis? So relax your belly as you breathe. And then you can just breathe and let this energy release. You'll get more clarity. You'll get more insight. And these limitations will become more apparent. Because it's like, oh, it didn't even occur to me that it could be otherwise. But once I begin to breathe into my body, I allow that relaxation. And it's like, wait. What am I allowing to create this disturbance? I don't need to buy into that. I don't need to do that. This has helped me so much from like a moment to moment um, experience when I'm really feeling my body and maybe I'm like, you know, cooking dinner for my family or taking a walk or whatever. And I'm like, wait, I, I don't feel good right now. Why do I feel tension? And I hadn't even realized the thought I was having. But once I relax my body, I realize, oh, it's because I was thinking, oh, this thing I don't want to do later or oh God, it's not going to be okay because, and then I'll be like, well, let me just release that. I take a deep breath in and I just say, body, you can let that go. All really is well. We have everything we need. This week I was worried. Um, I got a little contracted about how my week was planned. My daughter is off. It's her first week of summer after completing kindergarten. And um, I realized that Tuesday, I had a lot going on with work, so I had the nanny coming, and then Wednesday, I had the same thing, and I was like, oh, I don't necessarily want to do too many days. I want to be with her. You know, it's only like two hours that I'm doing, but I felt a little contracted around like, oh, God, I'm doing too much. I should be with her. It's this week, and, you know, this is a special time, and I'm going to miss it, and blah, 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 and you can feel how those thoughts kind of create, make you feel bad, right? And so I was like, okay, wait, what am I? Be anxious for nothing. I relaxed my body and I said, well, do I want to change my schedule? I can change my schedule. And that really didn't resonate. I was like, no, 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 there are some things that are really important to me. And I said, what if I just let go of the idea that this is not okay? What if I just let go of the idea she's not getting what she needs from me? What if I just get, let go of the pressure I'm putting on myself to like do it all? And I immediately did that and I immediately felt light. And so I said, what if it's perfect the way I've set up my schedule this week and I have everything I need to be present to my daughter with, um, you know, all of the time and activities that we want to do. And it's, it's perfectly fine. It's okay. And that just felt so freeing, but it was my ability to feel what was happening in my body that let me witness those little beliefs that I was letting take hold. Like, oh, it's not okay. You shouldn't have done this. You should do it differently. And how bad that felt. So be willing to work in harmony and um, collaboration with your body instead of like your body's the enemy. You got to fix it. You got to solve it. You got to whip it into shape. You can collaborate with this amazing, amazing, beautiful 
tool, beautiful technology that your body is, it will register any of the energies you're buying into that are not serving you, that are ready to release, that you can be free from. Okay, so that's kind of the second thing is, is becoming more, um, more uh, conscious of what these ideas, beliefs are from like a moment to moment experience. Yes, you could sit down and take an hour to meditate today. And like, I've got to clear my limiting beliefs, but it's actually more about how am I being with myself moment to moment? How am I being with my body moment to moment? Am I listening? Am I honoring so that I can give myself what I need in every moment? That is the most important thing for my health, that is the most important thing as a mom to be able to be present to my kids. It's the most important thing, obviously, for what I'm sharing in my work and assisting people in healing. If I'm not present to myself, I'd be just like a talking machine. Here are all the things you should do. Here are all the things you should eat. Here are all the things you should not eat. If you listen to me, you'll get these great results. And people will be like, maybe believe it, right? And be like, I should do this thing. But how is it going? How does it go when we try hard to follow a regime someone tells us we should do? Maybe it works for a few days, maybe it works for a few minutes, but eventually, because we're not in a har harmony within ourselves, it's not gonna create what we really want. And so the most important thing I can show or assist people with is how to be in alignment with your own nature, how to be in alignment with your own wisdom. Because what you could eat today to benefit your health could be totally different than what is required for tomorrow or 10 minutes from now. And if you're in alignment and you can feel, you can allow yourself to go way beyond what anyone could teach you and what most of the conclusions are that we have about health and, oh, here's what you should do and here's what you shouldn't do. And, who knows? Like there's millions and millions of things. It's getting more complex by the minute. Like you're not connected with your internal navigation, you're going to just be lost in space and working really, really hard. So that is the most important thing that I can be as a doctor and, and assisting other people is in my own alignment. It feeds everything. So sometimes we think it's selfish to focus attention on ourselves. Sometimes we think it's selfish to fully nurture and honor ourselves. And that is part of the lie. So if you ask your body or you just feel, how does it feel when you buy into that? You'll feel that contraction. So breathe in and breathe out and let your body know, body, you can let go of everything we've learned about that. Body, you can let go of everything we think about that. Super easy. Okay, the third thing, and this is really important when people tend to get into, I've gotta be positive and oh no, now I have negative thoughts, something bad's gonna happen. Not true. You do not need to skits out and try to micromanage your thoughts. It's not going to happen. The best thing to do is with your awareness, as we talked about kind of step one and then step two, to neutralize all of these thoughts that are having a detrimental effect, to neutralize them, not to be positive, don't be negative, actually be in this neutrality of freedom and abundance. So how do we do that? When we have this awareness, because we're practicing more of how do I feel in my body? Where am I carrying these energies? How does it make me feel when I'm buying into some limitation? And then the second piece of like having more clarity of feeling it in my body or even hearing the thought of, oh, why am I feeling so bad? It's because I was worrying about my, I mean, it could be such the stupidest thing. Like one time I realized how tension I was feeling in my body and it was because one of my favorite shirts got ruined in the wash. And I'm like, oh my gosh, be anxious for nothing. Kim, if you want to buy a new shirt, buy a new shirt. There is nothing that is worth holding this tension in your body of feeling bad. It was like, wait a minute, maybe I can get it, you know, maybe I can dye it a new color or maybe I just buy, buy it again. It's, if I love it that much, okay, have at it. But don't start making yourself feel bad about this thing that happened to my shirt in the laundry. And, oh my God, and I feel so bad. I wish it didn't happen. And then the regret of that, like, why did I put it in with these other colors? And it was like, are, seriously, you're going to destroy your day or your health or your moment over something like that? It's not worth it. So very often I can just effortlessly let the thing go, realize a new insight or find a way that everything is okay anyway, and just 
instantly in that 10 seconds. And then this third piece is, can I neutralize these things? Now, I use a lot of EFT tapping. That's one of the things I really love, but I use it in a really different way than a lot of people use it. If I notice that I'm feeling bad or contracted or there's something sticking, like, oh, I just can't get this out of my head, I do a little tapping, but I do it to love and nurture myself. Body, you're okay. Body, I love you. Body, all really is well. It's okay to let this go. What I kind of see a lot of people doing is, I gotta feel better, I gotta feel better, I feel so bad. Oh my gosh, these negative thoughts and they're freaking me out. I'm afraid of my thoughts. I'm afraid because there's this negative thought, so now it's gonna create something negative. And we tap to kind of avoid feeling the fear or avoid and try to make something go away and fix it. And that is never going to get you anywhere. You are an infinite, powerful creator. And you can be in harmony with all that is. So it doesn't matter if I still have these negative thoughts about my body or my mother or um, money. It matters that I don't buy into them. That is what the most important thing that I could share with you. If I'm conscious and aware of them, I could just say, okay, thank you for sharing. I breathe in. I breathe out. There are all those negative thoughts. Okay, they can just be as they are. They don't have to affect me. They don't have to create things. They don't have to, um, you know, continue to block health or have me live that limitation. I can just neutralize them so that I no longer give power to those beliefs. This is the most important thing. Like I said, I, I can share in this um, podcast is we don't need to fix it. We don't need to change it. We don't need to control it or micromanage it. We can actually just become, just by becoming conscious of this, the beliefs we hold, allow them to neutralize. I breathe in, I breathe out. I witness all the crap I think about my husband. Because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, oh my God, what is he, crazy? You know, or there's a limitation. It's not true. It can make me feel really bad. But if I just let myself, let it be as it is, it will take the energy out of it. So I've neutralized that. So now it makes everything so much easier. <laughs> and if you feel a certain way about your body or about your upbringing, oh my God, it's, there's so much limiting beliefs that I learned from my upbringing. This is how I was raised and this is what happened. And now it's kind of like destroyed me forever. It's damaged me forever. So just breathe in. How does it feel when you think that thought? How does it feel when you buy into that and try to operate that way with this big problem to solve? Breathe in, breathe out. It's pretty heavy. So if you just ask yourself, what if none of this were true? What if it weren't true that I can't release these easily? What if it weren't true that these things have damaged me permanently? What if it weren't true that I have a lot of work to work on myself? What if it weren't true? Breathe in and breathe out. Feel the lightness in your body and the freedom that creates. And now your body's telling you that. Yeah, that's because it's true. <laughs> It's because it's true, I can just let this go. I don't even need to operate that way. What if there's something easier for me? So play with this by being present to your body, noticing what you feel, and letting yourself neutralize all these things you've believed in by just simply questioning them like, huh, that's curious. I have this idea about money. One of the people in um, my Embracing Health group call yesterday um, had shared, I'm worried about going back to work. Uh, my illness has been like a placeholder, so I don't have to work. I can rest. I can relax. I can enjoy myself. And now that I'm getting better, <clears throat> oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go back to work. And it's bringing up a lot of fear. And so I actually felt into her system. And there were so many ideas about what work is that aren't even true for her, what's actually required. Um, and so I said, it was like, if you could release everything you think about what's required of you, if you could release everything you think about work, if you can release everything you think about what's possible that you could be contributing in the world or how you could be receiving money, how would that feel? And she was, of course, very willing to, to play along and release all of these conclusions she had that were creating so much tension and heaviness and begin to open to something more expansive. And, and I shared, too, that like for me, Years and years and years back, you know, I was working in the emergency room as an ER doctor. I really liked what I did, but I definitely felt like, oh my gosh, this has got to end. There's no way I can keep this up. There's no way this is really my life. There's no way this is what I want to really continue doing. 
and the end was nowhere in sight. What am I going to do? What's the transition? What's the thing? I know I'm here to do something more expansive. I can't even imagine what it could look like. And there was so much tension around it. And whenever I would feel into my body, the wisdom was always like, Kim, be anxious for nothing. It is coming to you. Okay. I go along. It would happen again weeks later. Oh my gosh, I'm just going nuts. This is like too overwhelming. I can't keep functioning this way. This is so intense. And I, again, it was like, Kim, let go of everything you think that needs to happen for you to find your way. Anxious for nothing. It's coming for you. Let it be effortless. And I couldn't imagine, like, how could it come for me? What does it even look like? How will people find me and know? What's the opportunity? I don't know. What could it be? And so my mind would kind of chew on that. But I always could feel the difference of, like, the serenity of knowing all is taken care of. I really can just follow along in my life and I'll know and things will show up for me even though my mind didn't get it or my mind thought, no, 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 I, I need to go knock on doors and find the opportunity and maybe rent office space somewhere or maybe do this or maybe do that course or, you know, degree. And you know, all of that felt contracted. And the only thing that felt expansive was this inner knowing of like, Kim, just let go of everything you think that needs to happen. You can let this happen more fluidly. And so much has been created in my life through allowing that. Um, people calling me instead of me having to find the person to call for the opportunity. Like it found me just by going along my life in this state of being because your beliefs do create your physical body does send out a message and the resonance you're in will equal the mirror of what gets reflected back. It will equal the external experience, the resonance you're in. So when I was in that resonance of it's okay Things can come to me effortlessly and I will know and it's arriving imminently. I don't have to wait. It's not going to be years down the road. Just be still and know. The more I would practice that, the more I received. And so much got created that I could have never conceived of at that time. So all you need to know is like the next 10 seconds. And if you always, always are in that space of your knowing, you will be guided. I'm going to look over our... Um, comments here. It's so great to see everyone here. Um, good morning from BC, Canada. Thanks, Elaine. Hi, Emily and Maggie. Sharon says, hi, Dr. Kim. I've just seen one of your posts that I can do some yoga from bed. I'm going to get started with it in the mornings along with some Qigong. That's beautiful. Yeah. And if that feels fluid for you, it's because it's something your body knows is true and that your body's delighting in it. Like, oh, wait, I don't have to get up and like do this hardcore exercise in order to have a healthy flow of energy through my body. There are a lot of things we've learned about the body and about physical exercise that aren't true. Like you got to work really, really hard and work out really hard or else your cardiovascular health will decline or you'll gain weight or you'll age or blah, blah, blah. And that isn't really the truth for everyone. Sometimes just being in the harmony of your body and doing something very gentle will create so much more. I know that's been true for me more most of the time that more gentle fluid movement um my body just drinks it in and delights in it and i've been able to maintain and, and have such a level of vibrant health increase as i've gotten older instead of decrease and it's easier to maintain it and when i was like in my 20s i thought oh it's to be all you know harder and harder like the older you get <laughs> you got to work harder and it's not true Thank goodness. Um, Claire says, I love the Mind Body Toolkit. Thank you. Jennifer says, oh my gosh, I was just behind a car with a sticker saying what we all know. Don't believe everything you think. That's an important thing to remember. And that's a great way to neutralize the thoughts. Like you're going to have negative thoughts. Do I still have sometimes judgment of like myself or others around me? Like I mentioned my husband. He should really be doing it like this. Why is he doing it like that? And it's like, okay, Kim, you're great. I love you. It's all right to have all these things you think. And then it kind of just puts them on a back burner. They don't have any energy. I'm not operating from that perspective. I'm operating from a perspective where I can really see him and I can really appreciate and receive him so I can interact with him more um, in fluidity and in love. Okay. And, oh, and someone says uh, there's a, bed yoga on YouTube. That's, that's a great thing. You know, do a search, find 
whatever it is you're wanting to learn about and um, let yourself start to percolate in something different. That could be fun. If you're in joy, it creates health. So we think, oh, you got to work really, really, really hard or work out really hard or be really restrictive in your diet and that will create health. And it is a total lie. The journey matches the destination. If you're in this strife-ridden journey of working really hard and you think something good's going to come of it, it can't because the journey matches the destination. When you're in harmony and joy and ease and you follow what's fluid for you, okay, body, what kind of movement do you want today? Maybe it's more gentle and flowy. Maybe it's more rigorous and intense. And like that will feel good when it's what your body requires. And so that will actually create the results that you want, which is a healthy, strong body. Randy, so great to have you here, says, I'm so grateful for the timing of this. There's a man in my life now who's really amazing and wants to do everything for me, including having me quit my jobs so I can pursue my passion. But a part of me is afraid that somehow, energetically, I'm going to mess it up because everyone else has left and there's a sense of unworthiness since I haven't cleared my money blocks yet. Is that even true? I would ask yourself, is that even true that you haven't cleared your money blocks yet? Because it sounds like money is coming into your experience. And if you acknowledge that, you can just receive it. Um, but I would like to receive what's coming into my life now instead of feeling like I have more work to do. Yeah, so dump that. Let your body know. Body, you can release this old way of being. Maybe having that was like some kind of protection, like I don't really know what I'm doing, so I shouldn't, shouldn't let people in. I don't really know what I'm doing, so I shouldn't let opportunities in. Um, but that's not where you are now. You don't need that protection. So what if you could just receive this? And I would just feel into your awareness. Take a few deep breaths. How does it feel to let go of the jobs I'm doing and receive money in a different way? Would I be open to that? Would I be aligned with that? And you'll feel it. Sometimes um, it could be like a cop-out, right? Like, oh, I can't do it on my own, and so I need this other person, and so I, oh, I really should let my jobs go. And maybe it's not aligned for you. But it feels like where you are that this is really resonating as a beautiful gift, and you could just let yourself receive it. Does it mean you can't go out and make money on your own if you needed to? No, I've seen what you're able to do and, and how creative and resourceful you are. Does it mean, um, oh, now I'm depending on him, and so then if he goes away, I'm going to fall on my butt? No, and it doesn't mean that at all. I am convinced that you're perfectly capable of managing yourself if this resource changes and this relationship changes and maybe this arrangement falls away, that you'll allow something else to come in just as easily as you allowed yourself to receive the jobs and receive this um, offer, this opportunity. So feel it out. What would it create for me to just allow myself to receive like this? We can have a lot of ideas about how we should or shouldn't receive money. And if you are in neutrality, you can let yourself just receive. And then that will rearrange things for you to um, welcome in what assists you the most. Teresa says, yes, you have everything you need. Um, Ragnald, I don't know how to pronounce this name, Rad, Raginald, this is so true, our body never lies, my physiotherapist says that my body is telling her the same thing I do, yeah, you can, if, if you're adept, you can kind of read the body and feel information and awareness from the body, uh, from someone else's body, mind and body are a unit, you cannot separate these things, Yes, there is a lot of wisdom in the body. And for those of you who are body workers, you know this. You put your hands on the body and you can tell what's happening in there. What's this person's emotional state? What are their beliefs that they're holding? Where are they operating? And you can assist them in, in releasing that from uh, tuning in. And like I said, I've, I've done that for so um, long that it, I, it's very natural for me to tune into someone's system. Even across the world, I have a um, client just after this broadcast. She's in New Zealand beautiful, amazing woman. I can connect with her on the other side of the planet. Um, we do our sessions on Skype, but even just on a Facebook post, I can connect with what's going on and assist her in releasing things. It's a beautiful way for me to do my work, but like I said in the past, I had no clue how this could be. <laughs> so you can let yourself know things that um, maybe you didn't think you were able to know. And the more and more where we're moving into neutrality consciousness, unity consciousness, the fifth dimensional consciousness, the more we're going to need to allow ourselves to function differently. 
allow ourselves to let it be that easy, allow ourselves to know things we didn't think we could know. And this is one of those things is like, how easy could it be to release my limiting beliefs? And Randy is sharing a really beautiful way of like demonstrating how we have these ideas about it. Wait, 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 I shouldn't be receiving this easily because I haven't cleared my money blocks yet. So just feel that in your body. Is that even true? If you need to, put your hand on your heart because it will help you connect with wisdom more clearly, block out all the other chatter. Is this actually true? Do I need to finish clearing my money blocks before I can receive? And then you'll kind of realize like, that's such a silly thought. Breathe in, breathe out. <sighs> body, we really can let this go. It's okay to let this go. So feel what gets created as you move into that. <clears throat> Shelby says, what are your thoughts on faster EFT? This is so funny because I used to, like I said, if I wanted to escape how I was feeling and I just want to feel better, I'd be like, okay, I'm doing my EFT. Oh, I just got to make this go away. I just want to feel better. I love and accept myself fully. It wasn't a way of um, really being present to myself. And so when I learned, I found out about faster EFT, I was like, oh, even better. I can get rid of everything I don't want to feel even faster. Um, and I, that, obviously is not what we're really up to here. So um, I haven't learned a lot about it because it was so like, Kim, you don't even need to go there. Um, but the way I use EFT is so fast. Like I literally in 10 seconds could allow a clearing. Um, and I share a lot about that um, in my programs and courses. We go deeper into some of that. But you can do this. Like you, you, if you let yourself know what you know and just ask how could this be even easier um, you might be able to come up with your own way of letting these things clear. The mind is just like the body. It can store old residues of conclusions or self-hatred or memories that were tragic or, or traumatic. And if we do this like mind shower, we can allow the mind to release what it's holding, what's not complete. So just take a few breaths and like see uh, crystalline, divine crystalline white light cleansing and clearing over you, over your physical body and over your energy body, like the field around your body. And just let this field know it's okay for you to release everything that is, has been limiting us. It's okay for you to let go of any of these old limitations and tell your body, body, it's okay for you to let go. Because your body, mind, system stores this information. Like, I shouldn't let any men in because men are cheaters. Or um, I shouldn't trust someone, you know, take care of me because he's just going to dump me and then I'll be on my butt and I'll be helpless. Totally not true. But if you've held that on, you kind of store it away in the subconscious. You want to go through the process of letting your body know, oh, I don't need to have that anymore. I don't need to hold that anymore. I, I know that's not true. You can let that go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can let all of this go. These ideas about men, you can let all of this go body. These ideas about money. And you'll feel it. So bring that light in, bring that crystalline light in. Bringing your awareness to that is, um, it's a way of bringing your awareness to your divine nature, to the part of you that does know, to the part of you that is infinite. So that's how you can play with this um, in your mind-body system. Uh, Jennifer says, seeking answers to autoimmune issues. Do I have S-I-B-O? <laughs> it's funny because there's so many acronyms for everything. And then it's like, Oh, ah, what does that mean? And, you know, when I had my um, autoimmune illness, I just said it, it's like chemiitis because it was unique to me, the exact syndrome of imbalance I was in. So this is when people have um, problems with bacterial overgrowth in the small bowel, like there's a gut biome imbalance. Um, this has everything to do with your consciousness, Jennifer, or any of you who have problems in the gut biome like candida overgrowth or not enough healthy bacteria or uh, what is it small intestine bowel uh, small intestine bacterial overgrowth SIBO SIBO um, yes you can like medicate it you can use all kinds of supplements and you can try to fix it and the most important first step before any of that is to allow a shift in consciousness if you're in fear and you're like buried by life and it's like, oh my gosh, all these things are happening to me and kind of like that victim, what do I even do? I'm totally lost. I'm confused. I can't help myself. I, I don't know. Um, it, that consciousness creates chemical signals through your body. It creates a harmonic that supports candida overgrowth. It creates a harmonic that supports 
quote unquote bad bacteria. Like we're in harmony in a harmonic with all of the living things, viruses, bacteria, parasites, whatever. If we are a host for that, it requires that we're in a consciousness that matches that. So if there's like 2% where you feel like a victim or feel like life's not really on my side, you will, um, you can actually, these things will grow in your body more easily. If you bump into a new frequency, even things like cancer will cease to grow. Will, um, and, and certainly um, the bacteria that are not good for you or the candida or things like that will diminish and cease to grow because you're not in the consciousness that supports them. Um, we certainly could go deeper into that, but I think people understand the basics of that. So she says, um, what do I do about adrenal fatigue? Low thyroid, it can be so overwhelming. What I'm gleaning for you, from you and this practice is that taking time to breathe through the questions, center myself. It will, I will intuit answers and perhaps testing Etc. that I need to do. Of course, I would like to be able to be calm in my, to calm my system enough that I don't need any medications or tests at all. So yes, that is exactly what the invitation is. If we come into a really high harmonic, there may be nothing that's required. The body can heal very easily. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes. Sometimes it takes 10 days. The patience we have with that will assist the process. And of course, when we're connecting in our wisdom, we will have the clarity of, oh, let me go to this practitioner. Oh, yes, this therapeutic procedure or medication or surgery or supplement or you know, fill in the blank. It could be anything. But if I'm in judgment about it, like no medications are bad and wrong, and if I'm really healing, I shouldn't need them anymore, that's not serving you. If I'm actually in neutrality, I can open to all of the universe of possibility and receive whatever it is that's going to assist my harmony. If I'm in fear or overwhelm or I don't know, I just, I'm, powerless, I can't see any of those opportunities or solutions. I can't receive that wisdom or insight. So it's okay to let yourself do the first step first. Take a moment to relax your shoulders, take a moment to take a few breaths, and then begin to um, let your body release everything you've got on this. Everything I think about this illness, everything I think about what's possible or not possible for me, I'm going to let my body release. And now I can receive the wisdom so there's clarity in knowing exactly what to do. Thank you for asking that. Um, okay, and, and, and one other little thing on that, where you say, I would love, I would like to be able to calm my system enough so I don't need medications and tests at all. That's great and very likely, you know, a lot of times that's what happens. But if I have less of a resistance to it, like, okay, whatever tests I need are fine. If there's medications, okay. And I'm open to receiving everything that really contributes to me. That will automatically bring you into a space where less is required, and it's unlikely you're going to need to be medicated anyway. But for me, when I had resistance about it, like, <gasps> okay, I'll do whatever is required as long as it's all natural. I'll do whatever is required, but I'm not going to go to a conventional doctor. That's not the same harmonic of receiving. Raj, Raj, Ring, <laughs> please tell me how I can pronounce your name because I want to pronounce it. Um, it. Last name is Hamar. It's Ragnild. I have FND, functional neurological disorder, and the fatigue is really bad. I hope I can learn something from you on my way to recovery. The, the, there are a lot of more resources to go deeper on the website, drkimd.com. And like I said, I share a lot of free resources too, but the programs are really, really beautifully done and powerful. So you could start with the Instant Elevation program, and it will assist you in more and more establishing this harmonic and clarity. So I would definitely invite you to that. It's drkimd.com forward slash IEP, Instant Elevation Program. Um, and anyone who isn't yet subscribed, you're welcome to subscribe at drkimd.com and receive you know what, what we're sharing weekly. Elaine, hello, beautiful Elaine. I love all that you're saying. I have huge money fears, even though today I have enough. I'll try to let this go and let the fear go. Yeah, I had that for a long time. And just I, for me, it was always like the, the fear would be so intense. Like I would physically touch my body, skin on skin, put my hand on my body. And, and when I feel the fear or the belief that I'm not going to be okay, or yes, I have what I need today, but what about tomorrow? Because I couldn't see, you know, I didn't, I wasn't in the consciousness that I had that awareness. I was in fear. Um, and I had it just for months, just body, it's okay to let this go. It's okay to let this go. Because the stuff I put into the system was like, it's not okay. You got to work hard. You got to achieve. You got to always grow. You got to always, you know, go to the next thing. It was like my life was all about work, 
working on myself, becoming better, becoming more successful. And I really had to just be really gentle with myself as my body let that go because it was like all the conclusions I had about that. <laughs> no, if you let this go, you really won't be okay. If you let this go, you really will fall on your butt. And I just would keep asking, is that even true? Is that actually true? And it was always, nope, you are actually taken care of. The universe has your back. It's okay for you to move forward and ease and choose what is fluid for you. Randy says, I think there's a sense that if this wonderful man is serious and follows through, that somehow I will have failed as a spiritual person since I did, didn't did find a way to bring financial abundance to my life first. Oh, this is such a great comment. I love you. <sighs> What if it's your spiritual alignment that has invited this person to contribute to you? So let go of all the ideas you think about what spirituality is or what it's supposed to look like. I had that too. I felt like, um, <laughs> yes, I could receive in total ease. And like I have this totally different business structure, right? I'm doing still a doctor, but I'm practicing in a very different way. But before that came in, I had this idea like, but don't I need to get it right over here first? And then I can transition to something more effortless. Like, don't I need to really master this and be better with, you know, I was doing ER. And it was like, no, Kim, you're never going to get there. There will always be another mountain to climb. There will always be something more to achieve. So no. What if you let yourself receive it now? What if life is just asking you, are you willing to be this generous with you? Are you willing to let things come this fluidly and easily? I know for myself a long time ago, I made that wrong, um, especially if I was receiving it from a man, like, no, no, I should do this myself. I had a lot of ideas about that. So I would just ask yourself, ask your wisdom, um, what's really true about this? Uh, because you can even feel it in the post. And I think people are also able to hear that when I'm sharing it. This idea that somehow I failed as a spiritual person since I didn't find a way to bring abundance into my life first. But the actual truth is you have moved and moved over these months into more fluidity, into more abundance, into more receiving. And guess what showed up? Someone who wants to contribute to you. Let yourself receive it. And okay, and then he would be doing it for me. No, life is doing it for you. You're never doing it for yourself or someone else doing it for you. So saying, oh, now he's doing it for me, so now I'm a failure because I didn't do it for myself. Are you willing to receive from life? Are you willing to receive health from any channel, wealth, money, resources, from any channel that's harmonic for you? And all of them are life contributing to you. Like if I received money through my business, I could say, well, I did that. I worked this many hours and I made this money. I didn't make the money. I didn't make the opportunities. I didn't make these clients come to me. I didn't even make the idea of my business. All of these were received. When I created the Embracing Health program last year, it was a download. It required that I go and sit in the jacuzzi, look out at the mountains, and just relax. So it was effortless, and it didn't come from me. It came through me. Thank you, life, for gifting me this uh, idea so I could create this program. Thank you, life, for gifting me the energy to create this program, the technology to create this program. I didn't do any of it. I allowed it to come through. Same for you. Yeah. So let yourself release everything you think about what it means to be spiritual, what it means to have money or receive money. Mm, okay. Allison says, Ho'oponopono. And I'm glad because I wrote on my notes today, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was Ho'oponopono, um, a really beautiful way to neutralize the negativity that you notice is just, I love you, I love you, I love you. Any part of you that receives love will automatically come into a higher resonance. So if you're noticing negative thoughts, limiting beliefs, or any limitations that you're feeling, oh, I feel so buried under all of this. It's so confusing. Okay, breathe in, breathe out. I love you, I love you, I love you. To this space that I notice in me, to the contraction I notice in me, to the pain that I notice in me. Oh my goodness, we've gone for quite a while in our session today, and I thought it was only like 20 minutes. Um, Jennifer says, I've had a similar experience. My now fiance offered me the same freedom. And although I still have occasional tension around money, I'm receiving it openly while also pursuing my own work and passions. Yeah. Allow things to come in effortlessly. However, life wants you to receive, you're open to receive. 
Melissa says, I go into fight or flight before I become aware and react, and then I regret things. I feel defeated. I read and listen to so many of your videos, your book, your toolkit, and still I'm not improving day to day. How long does it take for all of this to come more naturally? So Melissa, I would just invite you to take a big deep breath and relax your body and put your hand on your heart and let your system know, I really can have it now. I really can let it be that easy. Because sometimes we take um, even like work, like the mind body toolkit, and then we're like, okay, I gotta practice these tools, I gotta do the thing, I gotta fix the problem. And all that does is put energy into creating the limitation. You don't need to do that. You can just let your body all day today, for the rest of the day today, relax your body, breathe more fully. And so even though the mind doesn't understand, but how can it happen? And is it gonna happen? How long does it take? You're just allowing yourself to neutralize that whole mind state and everything that goes along with it. So put your hand on your heart, relax your body, breathe more fully. What would it take for this to be effortless? So practice that all day. What would it take for this to be that easy? And just resonate with that over the course of the day. Maybe you do it for a few days. Get back to me on how that goes. I want to send love to everyone else who's on the call. And uh, I will look through the comments and write some answers. But we're going to complete our um, broadcast for today. I love you all so much. I love um, the comments and the sharing and, uh, and the participation. We're all connecting and creating a new consciousness, a new harmonic, especially for medicine, where there's been so much limitation and so much resistance um, and these ideas about what it takes to heal and these ideas about the body and what's possible and what's not possible for the body. So I um, really commend the courage it takes to embrace a new um, awareness. It, it can be really scary. And sometimes the safety of, no, no, I already know everything and this is how it is and this is how it's not and I'm just going to keep operating there. Sometimes the safety of that can feel comforting, but eventually we all will outgrow it because we're ready to expand. So thank you for being here. You can subscribe at drkimd.com or on my YouTube channel, Dr. Kim Duramo. And I look forward to connecting with you further. And we are going to actually be speaking on Ho'oponopono. I think it's next week. I put a little series together of what we're talking about in these next weeks. And that is one of the most powerful ways that I found to allow abundance, freedom, fluidity, healing on every level and every part of my life. So I am super excited to be sharing that with you. Stay tuned and I'll see you soon.